Now in that last video, we got EVNG up and running in VMware Workstation by implementing that template file that really is a pre-built virtual machine for us. It made it really, really easy. And we did that on our local desktop, which is what VMware Workstation is all about. But what if we have dedicated hardware, a dedicated server that's running VMware's ESXi or vSphere tools? We can still use that template, that OBA file, and import it into ESXi and get our EVNG instance up and running on dedicated hardware like ESXi. Let's perform the same task, but from an ESXi GUI, let's get going. So installing EVNG on Workstation Player on your local machine is great, but what if you have that dedicated hardware? That's what we're about to cover. It all starts with the same steps as the last video. We go to EVNG's website and we download the OVF template. That way, all we have to do is just import it. It makes it so incredibly easy to get started with EVNG. Now in the next video, we're gonna talk about installing it from an ISO in case you wanna custom do your own installation. But here's how we can get started installing EVNG using the OVF template on ESXi. Just like before, we'll go to EVNG's website, eve-ng.net, and we can jump straight to the download section if we've Googled it too. And just like before, we have the option of either doing the professional edition, which again comes with a lot of additional features, things like lab tasks and the Docker containers, or the free community edition, if all you care about is just getting up and started with running some network device images. So just like before, I'll choose to download the EVNG OVF from the Google Mirror. You'll give that a click, and it tells you that the file is too large for us to scan for viruses, but we'll click download anyways. And then in the download section, you'll have the zip file, which you can then extract like I've done right here. When I jump into the extracted folder, and I'll go here into the folder that it extracted to, we see we've got the template file, the OVF file, and that's what contains all of the settings, how much RAM, how much CPU, and then the actual hard disk file itself, the VMDK. This is what we need to import into ESXi. So let me get logged into my ESXi server real quick. And I get logged into my local host here. From the virtual machine section, we've got the host, and then I'm gonna jump down into virtual machines. We're gonna create and register a virtual machine. Now we can deploy a virtual machine from an OVF or OVA. Let's click next here, and we're gonna call this Eve Demo or something like that. You can call it whatever you need to do. It says click to select files or drag and drop. Let's click these files here, go into downloads, there's all the files that I need in order to make this machine come to life. So I'll click open and next. It'll ask me which data store do I want to place this on. I'm going to put it on my one terabyte SSD. We do need to make sure that it goes out to the correct virtual network here. So I'm going to change it to be my VM network so that it's bridged out to my physical network. The other port groups that I have here are attached to different V switches for different use cases in my environment. So in your case, you probably want to leave it on VM network. Another thing that we need to point out about getting this up and running in ESXi is that the virtual machine itself does need to be on a network that allows it to be in promiscuous mode. You see, EVNG is actually going to be acting as a hypervisor in its own sort of way. And we need to allow it to pass different MAC addresses down to the hypervisor host instead of just expecting one MAC address coming from the virtual machine itself. Now, I'm also gonna thick provision this disk so it actually allocates all the bits to that hard drive rather than thin provisioning it. I actually wanna block out that space on my disk. This is just for my own good. I'm gonna click next and finish. It takes about one second for my VM to show up here. And look, notice it's got the same four CPUs and eight gigs of RAM that we were expecting before as well. I'm gonna click down in networking though. So under networking, I know that my virtual machine was connected to the VM network port group. I'm gonna click into VM network and then edit settings real quick. Under security, you can see that I've got promiscuous mode set to accept. That's important again, because the virtual machine is going to be sending in multiple MAC addresses into the hypervisor and then out to the switch. And it, by default, ESXi may believe that it's trying to perform some sort of MAC spoofing attack. So you wanna make sure that promiscuous mode is turned on at least the switch level or the individual port group level too. So now I've confirmed that my VM network, which even G is attached to, is set to promiscuous mode of accept. And down here at the bottom, I see that it finally completed uploading the VMDK and importing the application, and then it turned on my Eve Demo virtual machine. So if I jump back into virtual machines, click on Eve Demo, 
Now I can click to bring up the console and look at that. Now we can go through the same setups that we did on VMware Workstation Player. I'll press enter for root. It tells me that the password is Eve. And now we have to go through the same setup process again. I'll type in a unique password, repeat it. The host name will be Eve and G. Domain name doesn't matter. I'm cool with DHCP. You can set a static IP address if you want. Here's where we configure NTP. I have a direct connection to the internet. It sets all these configurations and reboots the virtual machine. And after just a moment, Eve and G is up and running. Let's type in the username, but my new password. Now I have console access to verify. Now let's access this web browser from the front end. That was 10, 10, 21. I think it was 85. Nope, not 58. Let's verify to make sure. Yes, 85. Press enter. Oh, that's a good sign. We've got a self-signed certificate one more time. I'll click advanced and then continue. And now my username is admin and my password is Eve. I'll show that just so you can see and click sign in. And there we go. Now we are logged into EVNG running on ESXi. So that's how you get it up and running on ESXi. EVNG just imports from the OVF file. It's so much easier that way. But there's one more thing we should talk about real quick, and that's what do you do if you need to edit or expand some of the settings you need to scale EVNG up. Jumping back into ESXi, I'm going to click the shutdown button real quick so that it'll gracefully shut down this virtual machine. It only takes a second to shut it down. Now right here, I can click the edit button right here, and you can see this is where I can expand the RAM. This is where I can choose more vCPUs as well as expand the RAM. So maybe eight gigs of RAM isn't enough for this particular virtual machine because I want to run an SD-WAN topology or CSR1000V topology. And just like before, the temptation may be to expand the hard drive right here. But if you need more storage within EVNG, you actually just want to click add a hard disk, choose a new hard disk, and then just set the space allocated to it right there. Now I'm going to click cancel here to back out of this because I don't need to do any of those items. But that's been how to officially get EVNG up and running on ESXi by importing a tablet. In the next video, we're going to get EVNG up and running on ESXi by installing from an ISO. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. I'll see you in the next one.